Hi! Welcome to another one of my videos. So this week's video is uh, from Mer May, which if you're not familiar with, it is a art event similar to Inktober. It takes place during the month of May and the theme is to draw mermaids. And uh, it's not something I, I do participate in it, but I don't participate in it to the full extent. I don't draw a mermaid every day. Uh, for 30 days, generally, I just draw like one to two mermaid illustrations during the month because art challenges are a lot to take on sometimes. So um, I did draw this mermaid. The theme for this mermaid was the Nile River. Um, it is from a prompt list. Originally, I had planned to do a couple of different illustrations uh, for the entire month, but I was only able to finish this one. Each prompt was a place and a color. And you were supposed to make a mermaid based off of those two key things. Oh, O'Malley as always. <laughs> She's actually sitting on my lap right now as I am working on this video because she constantly has to be where I am, as you can see from all of these time lapses. Uh, oh, and now she's sitting on my laptop. So the theme for this one was the Nile River and the color amber. And if you're not familiar with amber, it's like a, an orangey yellow kind of gold tone. And so I decided to go with a kind of an Egyptian theme because the Nile River. And I wanted to do something that was more than just a mermaid. I kind of wanted to give her a companion to go with her. So because she's in the Nile River, I wanted to do a Nile River crocodile. I have never drawn a crocodile, <laughs> ever. And I don't know what really possessed me to take on the idea of drawing and painting a crocodile, but it was a really fun experience and I was really worried that it was come, gonna come out terribly. And I kind of, for this whole illustration, my mindset was just trust it, make it messy, but make it work messy. So I really just went with that. I let the paint kind of guide me. Um, it turns out to be very textured in a great way. And I really impressed myself with this one. So as you can already tell, um, the colors are extremely saturated. I don't know why uh, the camera kind of is making the orange tones glow. Her skin is not orange, it just looks orange. Her skin is uh, a, a darker, well not too dark. It's a, it's pretty much like a bronzed tan color. Um, but for whatever reason, my camera is just really picking up those orange tones and making them very glowy. <laughs> so I apologize uh, if it hurts your eyes to look at it. <laughs> Hopefully it tones down at some point during the video once I start adding more colors for the camera to pick up on. Um, so I've said in plenty of other videos that darker skin tones are harder for me to work with because of my paints. And you can see that in this one. Um, she is very splotchy. And I was very upset working on this because her skin was coming out splotchy. And it's just for whatever reason, my brown pigmented paints, they don't like to cooperate well. And I really have a hard time getting them to blend um, and not be streaky and splotchy, but I ended up kind of making it work in the end, but it was a really, it was a really rough time. <laughs> but I wasn't going to, you know, not paint her skin brown because I was going with this whole Egyptian Nile River theme, and if you're unfamiliar, the Nile River is in Africa, <laughs> so I was very adamant on making her uh, skin brown. So for painting the crocodile, I did have a reference photo that I was going off of and I kind of just was looking at the photo and going, what base colors am I seeing on this photo and kind of just winging it and hoping that I could just, if I added enough color, if I added enough texture, that it would just somehow work. <laughs> and I was really just kind of hoping for the best. So I did a base layer of yellow. So right now he's kind of looking like a really cool albino alligator, or sorry, crocodile. Um, because I know that that's what his like underbelly base tone is. So I just wanted that to be our, our undertone. And then I'm just gonna keep building on 
the browns and the greens and the grays uh, to get that like crocodile look. And that's also how I did his scales, was just through texture. Um, I considered adding in the scales, you know, very detailed individually, but it just worked out better to do it this kind of splotchy, messy way. It looked more realistic and it went better with the textures um, that was happening with the mermaid herself. But I will say adding all of that texture to the crocodile took forever, <laughs> but I had a fun time the entire time I was doing it. And I did um, ask my brother if I should name the crocodile, and he said yes, and we came up with the name Niles, uh, because he lives in the Nile River. So this is Niles the Nile Crocodile. And you'll see a lot of this video is me just playing with these different shapes and textures in the crocodile's skin to kind of get that look that I'm going for. I really do love um, illustrating mermaids and it's funny that I just I never participate fully in mermaid but I love painting mermaids in general but I think it's one of those things when you know it's something that has an art challenge center around it like you know I'll I could draw a mermaid any day of the week um, any month of the year but when you know oh there's a specific month that's catered to posting illustrations of mermaids you kind of hold off and you want to wait until it's um that time and i don't know so i think that stopped me a lot from like doing other mermaid illustrations but i would love to just you know paint them more often and do more of this kind of fantasy um you know mythological creature kind of illustration i had a lot of fun with it So for the background here, um, I wasn't, I didn't want to do a detailed background because I didn't want to take away from all of the um, just kind of textures and details going on in the mermaid and the crocodile. So I wanted to just do um, just a base color background. And so I went with this kind of mix of yellows and oranges to go with her amber uh, color scheme, but also to kind of give it this. I don't know, like papyrus, sand, uh, stone kind of look. Kind of like what you would see like behind hieroglyphics, like that kind of color is what I was going for. And I actually wish that I did a little bit more water texture in the background as well, but that's okay. The colors blended a little bit too well. Um, and you know me, I, I love having like salt backgrounds and I didn't really do that with this piece. I really wanted to do um, different water poolings. And so um, I was hoping that there would be more water texture in the paints and it just didn't happen, but that's okay.
I don't use um, yellows and oranges too much. They're just not my favorite colors or my favorite color palette to, to use, but I had a good time with this painting. Um, they're so bright and vibrant, especially in my uh, Paul Rubens palette. They are just very nice. So I definitely should use them uh, for more paintings. I should find an excuse to, to paint with more bright colors, but I'm just not usually a, a yellow or orange, you know, that's not the color palette I'm most drawn to. So for the shadows here, um, I'm using blue to kind of get that uh, shadow color, which is something I've been experimenting with in a couple of my recent paintings. Uh, which I and I like it. I, I do like how that's been working. For this one though, it kind of didn't work as well. It got a little muddy in places, but that's okay. It was hard to properly lay the blue over that bright orange. It came out really kind of a, a dark, muddy color, and I wasn't happy about it at first, but after a while it was fine. So here is something I've never done before. Um, I gave my mermaid dreadlocks and I just thought it was just a really cool idea. I think I was looking up different uh, hairstyles to try to get something that really f like fit with the theme and the location. And I saw this picture on Pinterest of this woman with dreadlocks um, and some of her curls were loose mixed in with the dreadlocks and she had uh, gold ornaments on them and I just went oh my gosh that's so beautiful that's perfect um, I want to do something like that so I did dreadlocks for my mermaid and so as I've talked about that my brown paints are really like grainy and that's normally why I don't paint brown skin but for hair it made such a nice texture to really get that dreadlock look um, it worked so great that it was grainy and textured and really just helped put those details in that I would have had to otherwise um, use something else to get.
And so to get some of the added texture, um, and not so much the texture, but just to get that definition of each individual lock, I did go in there with a watercolor pencil just to get those really fine details um, in the places that I wanted them. I really had such a nice time working on the hair and all of the details in this painting. Um, there was just so much little stuff that went into it that I think really made a big difference. And of course, here is me pulling out the gold ink because I am incapable of doing any illustrations without adding gold ink. But also, she's Egyptian. We're totally going to accessorize a little bit and, and do the gold, so I couldn't not. And I gave Niles um, a gold eye just to make him a little extra special. He's a special crocodile. His best friend is a mermaid, so maybe he's, maybe he's magic. Maybe he's some kind of being or entity or deity. I don't know. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Who knows? All I know is that I just wanted uh, our crocodile to have a little bit of pizzazz to him so he has a golden eye. So as you can see, um, a lot of Niles the crocodile is just adding on layer after layer after layer to get that texture, and I thoroughly enjoyed doing that. It was so much fun, and it was so encouraging watching it all come together and taking on this new kind of technique and style that I've never done before, and just the fact that it worked. <laughs> Even though I was totally winging it, I was just going, you know, with my, I guess, artistic instincts. Um, because I really was just trying something new and I wasn't confident in how it was going to turn out, but the more I added to it, the better it looked, and I was just so pumped uh, getting through all of those parts. It was so much fun. And I think this illustration really taught me that it pays off to take your time to work on the details and keep adding um, and not rush through a deadline or not feel like I have to finish something in one day to just give myself the time to just keep working at it and to keep building on it um, and just you know adding in all that detailing and texture that I probably wouldn't have thought to add if I was rushing through it or focusing too much on getting it finished.
here's me just building on those uh, gold ornaments and the detailing that I talked about for her dreadlocks. And I gave her a little bit of gold around her eyes too, just to kind of give her a little, a little extra, a little extra bling. And then I'm using my white gel pen just to kind of add in a little of shine uh, to the mermaid and her scales because she is aquatic. And so she, you know, is going to be a little glossy, a little bit uh, of glisten there. And I'm making sure that Niles has extra pearly whites for all the chomping that he's going to do. Here's the fun part, all those hair wispies. Even with dreadlocks, I gotta do the hair wispies. Oh my gosh, an O'Malley. <laughs> Thankfully, that time she walked across it uh, after everything had already dried. And here she is, our Egyptian Nile River mermaid, uh, with her Nile crocodile Niles. <laughs> Thank you. 
as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you for next week's video.